Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Jake and on this channel we're doing a range of things around freelancing, small business, finance and general improvement etc. So in this video, yeah, we're going to be talking about four key skills you're going to need freelancing. I don't think that freelancing is for everybody, um, but saying that, if you're considering freelancing, definitely don't be put off about this video or if you don't have these skills in this video, because they can all be like learned very easily and yeah, look, look, just don't be disheartened. Let's get stuck into the tips right now. So the four key skills you're gonna need, the first one is resilience. Why does a freelancer need resilience? A freelancer needs resilience for a number of different reasons. Number one, you're gonna be um, speaking with a lot of different people when you're starting to freelance or even when you're an experienced freelancer. You're gonna be applying for different roles, you're gonna be speaking with recruiters, different business owners, and dealing with all sorts of people in that recruitment or in that hiring process. You're gonna need resilience because there's gonna be a few knocks. In terms of applying for full-time employment, like you're gonna be, the, the number of roles that you're applying for is, is more, is greater and the number of setbacks is greater as well in terms of the number of no's is likely. So you need to, in terms of those numbers, you definitely need to improve your level of resilience, but at the same time, you know, there's, there's a lot more benefits to freelance, or certainly I think freelancing is better in terms of lots of different things. And if you've got that level of resilience, then, then that can help. But, so I've got videos on like improving your CV and resume. Essentially, you can build your own resilience by just understanding that you can track the metrics of applications and understanding that you know, you're not gonna get interviews for everything you apply for. And even if you do get interviews for exciting clients, you won't get every job. You know, I've been interviewed for Samsung, uh, PayPal, and a few other um, big companies, and I haven't got all of them. But I have got other companies, and it's just important to know that you won't get everything you apply for. Something else you're gonna have to remember is that you're going to have to apply for more roles than if you were just looking for that permanent job. You know, you apply for a permanent job and you're in it for three years. It's very different as a freelancer, of course. Why else do you need resilience in freelancing? Well, you're gonna be dealing with different people in different roles, whether you're an online freelancer, whether you're going into an office, or if you're working from home remotely, digital nomad, no matter what kind of freelancing you're doing, you have to deal with different people. You have to deal with the, the hiring managers, you have to deal with the bosses that you're working for, the people you're pointing into, and a lot of them will have different personality types, whereas if you're, you know, if you're an employee and you're permanent, you just have to get to know one boss or you know one or two different stakeholders for example whereas as a freelancer if you've got multiple clients you've got multiple bosses you just times everything by the number of clients you've got if you've got three clients everything's by three even if you're a contractor a full-time freelancer for one client you might be doing that client for I don't know two three four five six months let's say and then you're moving on to another client you have to adapt and you need a bit of resilience for dealing with different personality types for dealing with different environments for dealing with different politics um, etc different projects, different stresses. So definitely resilience is really important. So to flip it, you are gonna have some positives for having these different experiences in these different offices and for these different firms. The fact that you're getting used to different working styles, different projects and different people means you're building on your own experience and you can use that for the future. Also, you're gonna need resilience in terms of times when you're out of work or outside of a contract. Now, if you're lucky and you've optimized your CV, resume, portfolio, if you've got some experience and some results, then you might not have that many weeks or months where you're outside of a contract. That's amazing, kudos to you. If you are having periods of time where you don't have work and you're feeling quite stressed, definitely check out my other videos about how you can optimize your platforms, how you can improve your skills, etc. Because like, I wish I'd have known this when I first started. It took me a long time to sort of learn these different things and basically learn from my own mistakes. And I guess um, I'm trying to produce videos for you guys so that you can avoid those mistakes because when you're freelancing, if you've got bills to pay um, and you have periods where you know you haven't built up your cash flow, you haven't built up your cash reserves in your bank, so you don't have you know five, six figures in the bank account, you might be feeling a bit stressed when you're outside of contract. The main thing to realize for that is that freelancing, you know, over a period of time, you will get more clients, it will become a lot easier, especially if you're in a big city, New York, London, Melbourne, wherever you are. If you're in a big city, things are a lot easier, there's loads more work out there. Or if you're interested in online freelancing, the, the sort of workplace or marketplace for online freelancing is huge. Skill number two that you're gonna need when you're freelancing is adaptability. What do I mean by adaptability? This can range from all sorts of different things. 
environments we've talked about, politics we've talked about. For example, you know, I had um, a previous firm where I was working, not gonna mention the name, but the boss I was working for was very, very difficult. And I had to adapt my um, personality or my, I had to sort of adapt my behavior based on her personality. And I think that's really important as a freelancer. You have to, do, you have to sort of adapt yourself to different bosses. You have to adapt yourself to different cultures as well. Whereas when you're an employee, you might be at the role for two, or you might be at the company for two or three years, maybe longer. The culture is like very easy for you to get adapted to. You're sort of learning, you're learning, you're learning. But as a freelancer, you don't have that time to sort of like settle into a culture and you have to sort of adapt to it very quickly. The people that are hiring you often have higher expectations if you're a freelancer as well. It's likely you're being paid a lot more than the people around you. They know this, that you're being paid you know, higher often. And like, by the way, you should be being paid higher. You know, you're taking on more risks, so you should be paid higher than the people around you. So if you're not, check out my other videos on freelancer pricing and how you can feel comfortable charging more. But that's beside the point. Anyway, in their minds, you're being paid more, you're a freelancer, so so you have to adapt faster and you have to work better than you are the people around you in terms of other employees. They sort of expect you to need less training and need less sort of support. And that really goes under that sort of adaptability skill. So if you haven't got that, um, you can develop it. I think the key things is to sort of develop your stress response. So if you're feeling stressed in new environments, new bosses, you're having to learn quicker, definitely like learn to deal with stress. Also learn to manage your time better in terms of like you know you can potentially be learning on the commute you can be learning at home you can be learning from YouTube and other courses I think those two things on like learning how to deal with stress and improving your skills will just work together they'll make you more adaptable and you'll sort of feel like you're um, hitting the ground running at, at current contracts and future contracts and, you, and people will think you're more adaptable so even if you feel like you're not those sort of supporting skills will, will increase your adaptability the third skill which I think every freelancer, no matter what kind of freelance you are, needs is to work on their communication skills. Communication skills are pretty universal for any kind of freelancer, no matter how technical or how skilled you are. Communicating with your clients, with the people you're working with, with the teams, with the project teams, etc, etc. Always communication skills are the thing that you are going to need. How do you improve that? Well first let's think about the kind of communication skills that you're going to need. You're going to need the ability to speak with up, you know, to report up to your managers, to your bosses, to stakeholders, to directors, to shareholders, to you know, potentially investors. That's very different from communicating, you know, horizontally to people potentially in other teams or within your team, to project team members, project managers, program managers, etc. And then of course there's communicating down or people, and that's sort of like potentially it's people that you're line managing or it's people that in your project team that you're working and you need to, um, you sort of, you're not really managing them, you're sort of project managing them, so you're getting things from them, you need to get, you know, if you're a coder, you might need to get code from them, if you're a designer, you might need to get assets, um, if you're in marketing, you might need to get you know, pages. Whatever it is, you, you sort of need to also develop the communication skills to work in teams, in project teams, in your core team. So you've got those three levels. You've got communicating up, you've got communicating sideways, and you've got communicating in project teams. The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to be able to adapt your communication based on the setting. So what kind of settings are gonna be in your sort of freelancing career? Well, learning to communicate effectively over email is quite important. Learning when to, you know, send long emails or short emails, when to send attachments. Um, you know, if you're interested in this, definitely let me know in the comments below. I know it took me a few years to sort of learn how and when and the types of emails to send and who to send them to, etc. That's a skill in itself and it's also, you know, super valuable. So you've got email communication. You've also got reporting communication, how you do reports, how you um, document your work and how you report on your work, how you sort of matching to KPIs. I think that's really important because it means that if you can do that effectively and if you can report to your seniors and to your managing, the person that, that's managing you, your hiring manager, whatever, if you can report to them effectively on your KPIs, they're going to feel like every week, every month, they're very comfortable with you and it, there's going to be a higher percentage um, probability that they're going to extend that contract or in future that you might be able to go
go for you know, higher pay on future contracts. Because like you can basically report that you're hitting your targets, you're hitting your KPIs. And everybody, you know, not just your reporting manager, also recruiters like to see that. Other bosses like to see that you've got this KPI and you've, and you've smashed it, basically. You know, I can talk about communication skills for, for, for a long sort of period of time. Ironically, I'm stuttering a little bit here, but you know, communication skills are quite varied. You've got you know, communication skills in terms of you know, if you're doing videos, if you're doing video communication, if you're doing meeting communication over Zoom or over Skype or over all those other meeting software platforms, that's quite important as well. And the last communication setting I'm going to discuss within this communication skills is presenting. I think presenting is quite big for most freelancers. And what I mean by presenting is it can range from when you're just having a Skype call with one person. It might be the business owner, your hiring manager, the person you report into, your boss, whatever, like on a one-to-one -one level. But it can also mean on a team level, so you're reporting to your own team, maybe it's a weekly meeting or a monthly meeting, or maybe it's like wider stakeholders, or it could even be the board, it could be investors, it could be at a, a wider workshop or training session, it could be at a conference. And you know, it sort of ranges from one you know, up to X. You, know, it could be, you could be reporting or presenting to hundreds of people. And I think the skill's kind of similar. So definitely like consider how you can develop that. I may do some videos on that, because I think it's a skill that I have and people would tend to compliment me on. Whenever I do a presentation, I tend to get very good feedback, round of applause, lots of compliments, that kind of thing. So it's definitely a skill that you can acquire. I didn't have it when I started freelancing, I've developed it. And there are definitely, there's a number of different skills within sort of presenting as well. So there's you know, PowerPoint presentations, animations you can do, potentially working on like how you can present data, how you do narrative and story, how you, you know, the body language and the wording you use and you know, that kind of thing. So there's, there's a lot of detail in terms of communication skills to do with presenting. I think there's a whole video for that. If you're interested in that, let, definitely let me know in the comments because I can do some, some videos on that. There will be some bonus tips. So this is gonna be the final one, but the fourth main skill that you're gonna need as a freelancer, no matter what kind of freelancing you're doing, is cash flow skills. What do I mean by cash flow skills? Well, I mean, basically, as soon as you get paid as a freelancer, you need to start thinking about how you report on that money to your local tax authority. If you're in the UK, that would be HMRC. Uh, depending on where you are, like you'll have a reporting body. Like I think that on this channel, I'm dealing with people that want to do really well in freelancing. So if you want to do well in freelancing, you need to be set up from the start. So you're probably going to need some kind of reporting system, like maybe you've got an accountant or a bookkeeper. If you have or if you're spending a lot of money on a bookkeeper or an account, definitely check out my other videos because I've got some videos on how to find a low cost account and why you need an account, etc. But like, I'm going to repeat it here. So if you're a freelancer and you're looking to double or triple the kind of rates that you're normally charging, you're definitely going to need to think about finance, you're going to need to think about accountancy, you're going to need to think about how you report your income. You're going to th need to think about how you manage your money because in some cases, you know, I've had nightmare situations where you know, clients have owed me tens of thousands of pounds and they haven't paid in a certain time frame. And that's where cash flow skills, managing your money is so important. I'm gonna be doing some more videos about cash flow. And if you've got any specific queries or specific videos you'd like me to make about cash flow and managing your money as a freelancer, definitely let me know in the comments below. Now the bonus tip for you guys as freelancers, what are the skills you're gonna need? But I think the other tip which is really sort of important for freelancers and just in, in general in life, is selling skills. If you're a freelancer, you're actually a salesperson. What do I mean by this? Well, you're a salesperson because you're selling yourself. I think that's like maybe a bizarre sort of concept, but if you don't have a sort of sales pitch or a narrative or a story, when somebody says, tell me about yourself, when somebody says, why should I hire you? When somebody says, what kind of experience have you got in X? You need to have these sort of narratives and stories and you're really selling yourself. So I think it's really important to like I say in my other videos about selling yourself and about preparing yourself for CVs, resumes, portfolios, how you can optimize that. I actually talk about creating narratives and stories based on the skills and experiences that you've developed. And I think that sort of broadly fits into selling yourself. If you're interested in this, you know, definitely check out um, some links in the description and let me know what kind of videos that you need help with in the comments section below.
like this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get all the notifications. Make sure to scroll down to save all notifications. And then you'll get all my new videos. Also, check out my other playlist and other videos that are related to this video. If you're a freelancer, question of the day, what kind of freelancer are you? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you've got a burning question or query, you can send it directly to my email. Progress is everything at gmail.com. If you're interested in coaching, you've got like a burning query, you've got a dilemma you want to talk through, you want to up your skills, you want to up your game in any way, and you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching, let me know. I'm based in London, but I can also do Skype and calls over the internet. Um, I've got a limited capacity here. I'm not doing the sales pitch here. I can't coach everybody, so if you're interested, definitely shoot me an email. Uh, in the subject title of that email, put coaching coaching inquiry or coaching just so I know that you know that person's interested in coaching because I get a lot of emails um, definitely we can do that I'm also going to be offering courses on freelancing on my website I'm building my website at the moment by the time you see this video it's probably going to be all spanking brand new etc and that URL is progresseseverything.co.uk the link is in the description and guys if you've got any videos you want me to make just let me know pop it down in the comment section below remember knowledge is power and progress is everything. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Make sure you check out my other videos for tips, tricks and hacks as well as other pros and cons.